My name is Anna. I am Italian. This is my photograph album, and I have some pictures I'd like to show you. I took them all over Italy, all the way from St. Peter's Square with its 140 colossal statues to the beautiful southern port city of Naples. Millions of tourists visit Italy each year, yet most tourists don't see Italy like we Italians see it. More than anything else, we Italians are interested in people. When an Italian visits St. Mark's Square in Venice, the first thing he sees is the people. To us, St. Mark's is an immense outdoor salon where we can enjoy watching human nature. And what is more enjoyable than watching children at play? Attractive females are likely to cause a commotion in Italy. Italian men, more than men from any other nationality, I think, like to watch girls. And they're not bashful about it either. Very few men are able to restrain themselves from this national pastime. During the tourist season, we have an opportunity to enjoy watching visitors. It seems to us that each adult tourist comes well armed with cameras. We Italians believe that the amateur photographers are sometimes more interesting than the things they're photographing. St. Mark's Square is only one of Italy's famous tourist attractions. One of the most unique tourist attractions in Italy is a city built on water. Venice has no roads, only canals. People in Venice use boats instead of cars. The most colorful aspect of Venice is the gondolier. He will take the tourists through mile after mile of narrow canals and low bridges. Venice is made up of 118 little islands. The islands are separated by 160 canals, and 400 tiny bridges connect these islands. We Italian girls like gondoliers. They are handsome and add to the romantic atmosphere of Venice. Their oars bring them in contact both with interesting tourists and with our own life here in Italy. They move their oars with such control that they don't even splash water. Their boats look so beautiful, but most of all, I like to watch their actions, as their entire body participates in propelling their boat forward. Their feet barely move, as their bodies rock back and forth with the oars. Such unique features as the gondolier and Venice are the attractions that bring millions of tourists to Italy every year. Very few of these tourists see much of our Italian countryside. For example, few have seen our vineyards, which produce about one million gallons of wine each year. Few tourists from America have time to see the many geographical variations in Italy. Italy is about three quarters the size of California, yet it has all the climates from Sweden to Africa. The Italian Alps rise more than 13,000 feet above sea level. And even though half of our population is engaged in agriculture, we have made great industrial strides since the end of the Second World War. We are proud of our growing system of national highways. 
the Autostrade del Sole, or Highway of the Sun, is one of them. When it is completed, it will run 450 miles from Milan to Naples. The road bed has been engineered for high speed. The basic speed limit is 100 miles per hour. Modern snack bars and restaurants have been located at strategic points along the highway and are open day and night. At the same time, much of the color of Italy comes from the older civilizations. For example, the famous Trevi fountain was erected in 1735. Nearly all tourists who visit Rome photograph the Trevi fountain. In this place, really unique in the world, you have the artists who prepare the road of the four pillars of art. Michelangelo, master of design, perspective, movement. Leonardo, the creator of technique. But as humorous as the photographer's are, and as beautiful as the Italian art treasures are, we Italians are most interested in people. The most wonderful collection of people in Italy is found hidden in the heart of town, in the marketplace, or the so-called piazza. The piazza has remained through the centuries the center of work, of gossip, and of discussion. People from all classes congregate in the market to buy the day's food. More than half the family's budget is spent right here in the marketplace. Activity in the market starts around 4 o'clock in the morning when the merchants begin setting up their stands and arranging their food for display. This is the largest market in all of Italy. It is called the Campo del Fiore and is in Rome. I know this market well. My uncle has a meat shop here. He has many customers. He even has one assistant. I'm very proud of my uncle. Every kind of fresh food can be found in the market. This market is our Italian equivalent of your American supermarket. I love to visit the market. I like the smell, I like the noise, I like the people. It is said that Italy is poor in what men commonly call raw materials, but it is uncommonly rich in human character. The market activity continues in full swing all through the morning hours. About one o'clock in the afternoon, the merchants begin to dismantle their stands and pack up the food. transported to the merchant's small personal warehouses just off the nearby streets. The unusable portion of the unsold food is given away to beggars. As the marketplace becomes cleared, a group of special city employees moves in. These men sweep up the mass of refuse quickly. By three o'clock, the square has been cleaned so thoroughly it is hard to believe it contained thousands of people and hundreds of small stands just a few hours before. If you have never seen an Italian market, or the gondoliers in Venice, or the other things I have shown you, why don't you visit Italy? I'd like to show you around. <laughs>